Right then, just want to show you my two um, Warfell Pro speakers. The EVP X series, these are the 15 inch powered. And what the problem I got is when I bought them, both tweeters aren't working. Right? So, what we're going to do now, we're going to have a look inside and see why they're not working. Well, to be fair, before I do that, I'll just press play on the iPad. You can hear that there's definitely no treble. So what we'll do now, we'll take the front off and we'll take the tweeter out and we'll have a look what's going on. Right. Just press the front cover off. Should be just before through. And there'll be a little power lead, well, LED indicator for your power here. And the limit if you're putting too much through it. So just try to ease that out gently without breaking anything. There you go, that's off, that's the grill done. That's all we're safe. So, there's your woofer. Let's get that out next. Fine threads, them all. It's been there a long time with the screws, you know. Careful now, the roof doesn't just fall down on me. Should have, should have left one at the top, really. This one there. Just one left, just one left. Oops. This is the thing that doesn't happen. Out. I'm going to wait to these speakers to be fair. So, once that's out, I'll just get this out and I'll show you. There you go, that's the woofer. So, this one is a Skytronic, actually, a very good sounding woofer. This is from Pro Music, 15 inches. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. So what I'll do now, I'll just put it on top of here at the waist. Give it a say. There you go, that's it. Right, so I'll take you over look in here. So a bit of dust in there. That's blown for starters. That's your passive crossover. See there, EVP, mine's a 15p, P for powered. So that acts like a slow blow fuse effectively. So if you put too much current through it, that actually takes some of the resistance from, from blowing your tweeter up. But I know for a fact, these tweeters don't seem very healthy at all when you look in there. They're definitely not the originals, put it that way. So I'll take the tweeter out now and we'll have a look.
two more to go. I've got some good Sound Lab compression drivers to fit onto these, which should be good. So it's because my hair is that long. I've been embarrassed really to show you. Right. So that's half the problem. Cheap Chinese woofer. Um, compression driver. It's not even a compression driver. What the hell is it? Chinese rubbish. That's what it is. It's actually got the sticker on the back saying Wharfdale Model D3, Model D5338. And that model number is the original one for these speakers. But there's no way on God's earth this cheap plasticky thing has anything to do with Wolfdown or anything like it. And you can see in there, it's actually glued in. That's a thread, and that's supposed to go into a threaded fitting. And whoever's had this before me, I've just glued that in. So first of all, I'm going to cut that off. So, just go straight to it. Literally a wood saw. Just put it as close as you can to the flange. Uh, there you go, completely off. See that? Pretty much that's bang on, but just get a flapper wheel on it. There you go. That's that rubbish. That isn't even anything. Let's get a little seat. Give that a wipe over now. It hasn't been wiped for a few years while I've got it. Yeah, so that's good to go. So then we get the sound lab. This is a screw on compression driver. And we know. That's supposed to be a bolt on, so I'll have to modify it. So, have a look in here. In the weight of that, the magnet on it, the lot, there's good weight there. That thing I just chucked outside doesn't even weigh, I don't know, a pound. 8 ohms, 140 watt this is, if you're interested, it's a sound lab. Model number L060EB. So, so the problem we've got at the minute is obviously that's got no chance, has it? So what we'll do, take this adapter plate off the back. We won't need that. Under here should be a nice foam gasket. We can reuse that and the foam gasket should sit nicely under the flange. Give a nice seal so you don't lose any of the sound. This should be the same stud pattern and what's on there. So take that off, chuck that away. Might come in any for something, I don't know what. So there's the foam gasket I was on about. So that, so that would go in there, goes that way, so ideal. I want the terminals that way, so that will do me. Yep. So then, some new bolts, 4 mil. Because the heads on them are quite small, they, they, they won't pull through. They might be a little bit longer, they might bottom out in the hole. So just, be on the, just to be on the safe side, I'll just put some random washers under them. They won't interfere with anything. Just to start them off with my finger. And don't have to be cross threading fine threads. It doesn't take much. That's one in. Two starting. Three. And just one more. And there. And 
I'm going to struggle to get a screwdriver in there. So I'll just use a flathead and a screwdriver attachment for the drill for now. I should be able to wind that in with my fingers easily. That's tight. Right, that's that done then. So, fingers crossed that will work. So what I'll do now, I'll just show you in here quick. You can see what it's like. So if I lift that up. Basically, that part sits just on there. And that should fold down just to, not to make with it, but it won't because it's the wrong, the wrong compression driver, so I'll have to leave that off. So what I'll do now then, I'll connect it up and I know it won't work. So what I'll do, I'll bridge that gap, temper with a bit of wire, and I'll put some music through and we'll see if we can hear anything at the, the compression driver. Right, you probably won't see too much. So what I'll do, that, hook that under there, hook that one there and there, make sure it's got a bit of a connection, that's all it needs. Pay temporary. Just to try the try it, I'm not blowing a new one of these. That's probably tight enough just for what we need it to do. See? That's just bridged it now, because that's obviously blown. So what I'll do now, if I press play on the iPad, which is all the way over here for some reason. Move that, and then I'll plug in the uh, compression driver. So I'm going to press play now. There you go, so let's plug this on. Oh, can't plug this on, go on. Different connectors. So what I'll do, let's cut this off quick. Give myself a bit of an end on it. I might want to smidge you more in a minute. I'll just, there it goes. Cut that off. We never need them again. Same again. Next one will do it. There you go. That's a decent length. That's how you want it. So, that one's a negative. So, it scared me, that did. One of them screws on the magnet, so push that into negative, goes in there, and then I'll do the same there with the positive, we should have a sound. Yeah. So that will just fit in the top. Yeah. So now we've done that, we know that we can change the ball, which is there. Four pound that was now. So what I'll do now, I'll get the soldering iron fired up. This old girl, I've had this since I was about 13. I'm 38 now. Still going strong. No, I got special, nothing. It's not even a proper mag, I don't know what it is. Coming in a kit. Anyway, it's still going strong anyway, so I'm under that. I've got some proper solder to solder it with, not that lead free rubbish. What I'll do now, I'm going to turn the speaker off and find the switch down here. Make sure I'm not going to do anything to the circuits while I'm soldering. So now I can take that off. And to be fair, if you wanted to, you could just use a, you could just bridge it and you'd work forever. Because the trouble is, if you, if you, if you put too much load through, the, through them, you end up blowing the whole lot. So instead of changing just a diaphragm, you have to change the whole unit. And so, like, like I said before, it is a fuse, but it's a light, but it's effectively a fuse. It's, just, it's a slow blow, it doesn't blow straight away. So if you crank it up for too long, this will just get brighter and brighter and brighter, taking the resistance away from that. So theoretically, saving that from blowing up. And if you push it that far, it's ridiculous. This will just go, that's it, done. That's how it'll work. Good idea, really. What I'll do then now, when the iron's warm, I'll come back to you. So you can see that all right. So you know this is completely no good. So I can literally now just get rid of these. I don't need that whatsoever. Just cut that off. And 
and the same the other side. And leave yourself enough so you can work on it, so you can pull it out. So what we want to do now, I'll get that soldering iron. See what, see if this works well on here. So I'll get the soldering iron now, warm the, the solder up. Once it gets warm, in a minute, up where my finger is, that bit I've left on, that very small bit, that, that should come loose in a minute, I'll have to pull it out. So once it starts bubbling now, I can just get it. These aren't the best things I'm using. Fair, look, we can get it hotter first. Yeah, it's loose now. See, that's moving now. So I'll just try. See what it's still king type, isn't it? I'll use this old, I'll use the solder sucker first. See how I can suck some of that old solder up. And then, get some of that off there. I can see my problem straight away. It's like a horse, it's like a horseshoe shape, that is. So I need, I need a screwdriver or some description. In that bit, so I can widen it out, like that. And then now, I know it's, it's a bit of a ball eight, but once it's out, it's out, isn't it? Bit more heat now. If you keep wiggling it while it's cooling down, that should stop it setting. There you go, it's come out now. I'll get that in a minute. So that's actually that's actually pretty clean now. See that you see the hole either side of that? So I'll do the same on this side. I'll heat it up from this side. And fingers crossed this goes a bit smoother. Starting now, I've got to use my other hand now, which is difficult. Nearly there, there you go, that's out. That bit of solder on there, I could actually reuse that, but I need to expose the hole to put this through in a minute. Side. I just want to expose that hole, that's all I want to do. This isn't the way to solder, it's just the way I'm doing it. Just because I just need to get the job done. There you go, you see the hole now, that's done. That's what I'll do. Double so check the hole. One in there. Is there one in there yet? I'll push it through. There you go, look, there you go, it's done. So try and put that down without setting fire to myself. So that goes in. Like so. Bend that round. Try and get that one in. So this is videoing alright. There you go. You want it pretty central. I thought my uh, phone had stopped recording. I need to come up with um, low battery. So what I'll do is try and do it as fast as we can before the battery kicks out. So just bend that out a bit. It's quite a tight fit. So effectively you want to go over and then come down a bit. And just want to give it something just to bite on, leave them ones out of the way. Same again, up, down, and that'll do, up like that, and I'll cut them off in a minute. Just try and get this bit of solder on there before the battery dies all together. Let's cut some solder off to a length which is easy to, to handle. And what you want to do is warm again. You, want, you don't want to put the solder on the tip itself, that's not the way you do it, you end up with cold joints and everything and bad contacts, so you want to warm the components up. And when, when, that, when that piece is warm and that piece is warm, which won't take long, when you put the solder on, it's actually melting now. 
it's not melting on the actual solder head itself, and that will pull itself straight into the hole now, look, and that's done, it's perfect, look. I'll do the same with this side here, warm that up. Make sure it's warm, there you go, put that in there, that's it, perfect, done. That's all you got to do. I'll pause the video there then, and we double check it before I put the roof and everything back together. Like I said, just remember now just to trim these back off, they don't they have no need to be there no more. One off, two off. Have a look, closer look. Focus is in. Struggling. Anyway, that's it. Good contacts. Solid that is. Not going anywhere now. So I'll sit it back in the tripod and I'm going to put it back together. I'm going to give it a bit of a clean. You don't get a chance to clean them often. Nice bit soft inside. All them bits off. Bit the solder there, look. We're just giving it a bit of a wipe over. You don't normally get to get in them bits. Put that down there. Damp rag. Just wiping the ports clean. The ports are just push out to be fair. Now you're pushed in. That's it. So get them there. Down there. Down there. To be fair. We're having a karaoke this Saturday, so these will be full of dust again by then, probably. Right then, let's get, get this sorted then. So, we can connect these up permanently now, the little wires. So we've got yellow negative. I like that wire, I'm twisting it here. Yellow negative. Such good fittings these. Just push it down. Goes in the hole. But you don't catch the frayed ends of the wire because it peels back. The banana skin. And it just pushes in to the other side. Let it go and that's it. It's perfect. So it goes in now. Just make sure the wires don't get don't trap the wires. You get your bolts. Just gently find it where it is. Line it up steady. Same on this side, try and line it up as best you can. Because it's such fine thread, it's so easy to cross thread and we'll pick, we can pick the thread up. Because this material can get pulled into the hole and pulled into the thread. That's that done. Let's get this woofer in now. That's all nice and secure now. This, um, this, these speaker wires are quite short because they normally come out to about here. So there you go, I love the, the, the balancing act now. So, so the red barely reaches, so the red. Red in the red. He says, there you go. Black in the black, it's not always that way, but it is on this speaker. Best thing to do is just double check what you take out. So really, that can go to the top. Go to the bottom, let's hold it there. Let's, let's get a couple of these in. Try and find the witness mark, so that there, so that can go over there. There's one. Can't see it now. Can't try and get it out. There it is, so put it in there. Lift it up. Every speaker, you see. Better off having it flat on its back. Pull it out a bit, lift it up. 
There you go, it's in there. Just, just put it in there, just somewhere. Just, just take a bit of that weight off you. There you go. Like you say, just make sure you don't cross thread it. That's all. And find the witness mark from on there. See this? It isn't like it. It's That's it. Put them somewhere. There you go. I won't use the, the impact wrench on this because we don't want to be cross sending it under mile an hour and cross threading and wrecking everything. So I take them out with you, but I don't put them back together with you. Don't get too tight, make sure the speaker's actually going back flush, just like the tweeter casing. Which it is, just bring it all the way around, it's flat everywhere now. You want a bit of movement, because we've still got to get the rest in yet. That is actually completely knackered. So I'll probably leave that one out if I'm honest. I won't find another one today. I haven't got one. Just do all that's getting tight now but not many in this one is there missing some yeah they are Looking forward to seeing what this sounds like now. So once I've done this, I'll do the same with the other speaker. Well, I'll do. I'll just do a sound test in a minute, just with this one, and I'll do another sound test with them both. The problem you got with these screws, they're such a soft metal that the heads go on them, so I'm, not, I'm definitely not going to put this one in too tight because I won't get it out again. And that one is not going back in, that can come out. It's not worth it. If you can see it on the camera, it's completely round. If you put that in, you've had it. I've got one missing. I don't know where it is. As I'll pause the video when I found it. I'll carry on. So, it's all back on now. Before I put the grill on, I press play. It's, it's that copy free music so YouTube can't moan it. Yes, I press play now. It's hard to tell you no. Loads better. That's just the one speaker. So while I do now, put the grill on and then I'll fix the other one and then I'll do the video of us playing them both together. So get the grill, quickly put the grill on. So my iPhone actually ran out of storage so you didn't see me put the front on, but there's both the speakers now. So I'll do, I'll press play. <laughs> Unfortunately, my iPhone has um, been suffering with um, storage issues. So 
So I thought on, it I'm was like, actually recording on. and it wasn't. So this was a random video I did with my two-year-old daughter, but at least this will show you what the speakers sound like from 18 meters away. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you. 